guys, here's a question I get or see occasionally, but uh, it's kind of uh, pretty common and I wanted to answer it. The question is, as a new guy, how can I tell when certain bands are open? That's a good question, actually, especially for a new ham. You know, there's a lot going on with propagation, and I want to touch on something that's basically propagation from the Earth up to the ionosphere, and not really going to talk much about the ionosphere itself other than what's going on below it. You know, we can go into the ionosphere and the D layer, the E layer, the F1, the F2. That's for another day. Right now, I want to talk about maximum usable frequency, MUF, M-U-F. You know, a lot of people really don't get that concept. I knew sometimes I've been live streaming before and I knew what the muff was. And somebody would say to me, man, you should go to 15 meters or you should go to 10 meters and me and you can talk. I knew what the muff was where I was at in my area. And there was no way I was going to make contact with that person on, on you know, 15, 12 or 10 meters because the muff wasn't there. The maximum use, usable frequency for me just wasn't going to let me use those bands. So what is uh, the maximum usable frequency or muff? Muff is the highest frequency that can be used between two points on Earth. So that, that's simply um, explained in a real easy way. But let's let's go into some detail. You know, you can go. There's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, videos here on YouTube. It's when people are explaining uh, muff, and there's a lot of a. Uh, it, it's just like everything else. It seems like in uh, ham radio, man. It's overcomplicated. It's just way too much. And and I want to simplify it and really talk about it. Yeah, there's an equation for finding what's called critical frequency. Critical frequency is basically what the going straight up and straight down. So if you put, you sent a signal straight up in the air and came straight back down to you. If you kept going up, 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 up the frequency and raising it, and raising it. When you got to the point where it went through the ionosphere and didn't come back, that point right there is critical frequency. Now you need to know that the critical frequency, because that's how you find muff. Once again, there's another equation to find the maximum usable frequency using the critical frequency that you plug in and you find out using a, 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 an angle and, and um, basically uh, a, a, a lot more math to find the, uh, the, the, the maximum usable frequency. Well, there's an easier way to do it, a much easier way to do it. It's the 21st century now. We've got a lot of technology and a lot of ways to find this without having to be a, a physicist and do some do this type of equation. So what is that? There's a great, great website. It's, it's, it's managed and uh, put together by KC2G, and it's the MOF map. And on this map, it'll show you where you're at around the world, pretty much about every 15 minutes, what the maximum usable frequency is for your area. And that's a great thing to know and a great thing to have, especially when you're getting ready to go out and operate right away. You know, you can take a look at the map. Maybe if you're going to operate over a long period of time, keep taking a look at the map and you can kind of see for your area and other parts of the world, what the maximum usable frequency is. And that's probably a good, it, it, let's just say it's 15. You know, you've pretty much solid on the 20 meter band between, you know, four, in 14, 14, 225 up to 14, 350 right in there because your maximum usable frequency is 15 megahertz. So that's one way to do it and an easy way to do it to understand what the maximum usable frequency is. Now getting back to what's going on, critical frequency straight up and down, that does not equal the maximum usable frequency because there's what's going on here. Think of the critical frequency, think about dropping a rock in the water, boom, it goes down and it's gone. It's not coming back. Think about taking that same rock and skipping it across the water. It's the same thing with maximum usable frequency compared to critical frequency. The ionosphere, as the angle of your signal goes farther, if straight up it may go through the ionosphere, but angled, it's going to refract back down to Earth. And that's skip. That's what we do in HF communications for DX. It's skip. So using the maximum usable frequency uh, equation for prediction of, of what's going on, that lets you know that we can go back down. I mean, I just looked at the uh, 
at the both the uh, critical frequency for the northeastern United States just a little while ago, and the critical frequency was 6 megahertz. Then at that same moment looked at the maximum use, usable frequency, it was 18 megahertz. So that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on with critical frequency versus max, maximum usable frequency, or the MUF. There's also lower usable frequency, which is the absorption of, of, of your signal going up. And if the, and that's, we'll get into that maybe in another uh, a video. Right now, I'm just gonna cover maximum usable frequency. But if your lower uh, usable frequency exceeds the maximum usable frequency, you're not using HF at all. And that's kind of rare and doesn't happen a whole lot. Uh, per se. Now, how how do the uh, how does this map work? How is it put together, and what's going on? Well, it was originally started by AF seven, I believe it was a uh, TY or TI, um, and then it was taken over and, and continued by uh, KC two G. But what it's doing, it's using um, a lot of different what's called um, ionosons. Ionoson is an is a basically a transmitter receiver. Think of radar, kind of like radar that shoots up in the air and they're all over the earth and they and they find the critical frequency for different areas all around the earth so this this uh map per se that's on the internet takes all these soundings or are chirps as you may may some people may call them chirp transmissions or whatever and it, it formulates them all into a program and tells you all around the world what the maximum usable frequency is now i know you've probably seen um, a, uh, a, a, a Anasan chirp as it's come across your SDR and didn't even know what it was. Think about that line. Sometimes when you're tuning and you'll see a line that's going at an angle up across your, the front of your, uh, SDR screen there, the waterfall. That's, that's a chirp from an uh, Ionason. I'm sorry. It's a mouthful. Anyway, so that's a, that's a chirp. And what's going on is you're probably somewhere close to an Ionason station and it's chirping off for you. I know that I have, uh, I've also, I live near one, Wallops Island, Virginia, near where I live at has one. And all the time I can see this when I'm, when I'm operating in this, this area, these antennas, they're all over the earth and they're all chirping you know, every 15 minutes or so and given a sounding and all this data is brought back together for you to use and find if we're not just for you for, for a lot of different reasons, but for us as hams, we can use this to find the maximum usable frequency, get on the right band and operate. You've probably, if you've been a shortwave listener for a lot of years, or if you're uh, or you're even a, a newer ham or, or maybe you've been around ham radio for a lot of times and you've heard the sound, you I'm sure you've heard the chirp from an anas an anasan. That's it. We've all heard it when we've been operating it. And like I said, I live near one, and um, and I, I hear it quite frequent frequently. I'm sure a lot of people everywhere you can hear these things, and it's pretty cool. And like I said, there's a network of these antennas all around the world. Uh, NOAA, uh, North, National Oceanographic and Administ Atmospheric Administration here in North America and, and the United States has a big network of them, not just here, but around the world, as well as other agencies, universities or whatever. And there's a lot of these around and this data is all compiled and put together. So that really just gives you a, a, an understanding of how the, uh, the muff map works, but the, use the muff map f to your advantage because if you're going out and you, you think you're going to get on 10 meters and the uh, maximum usable frequency is only say 21 megahertz, it's just more than likely not going to happen. You're, you're, you're not going to have a very good day. So, you know, it's, it's a great tool. I, I, I always look at it right before I start operating. And if I'm out there for an hour or two, I'll go back and look again to see how conditions are changed because they, they change not just, uh, on the minute, on the hour, the the day, the season. Um, like right now, we're getting really close to a solar maximum, and, and you know that affects. And that, like I said, that's for another video. But that affects the ionosphere and what the ionosphere is doing, reflect refracting waves back down to us, HF signals back down to us. And a lot of times, like like for me right now, a few months ago, ten meters was wide open all the time. And now it's, it's, it's dead again. It's hardly ever open, but it's because we're the time of season for me. The season will roll back around, probably fall. 10 meters will be booming again. I'll be back on it. So you kind of learn as you operate through not just seasons, but through solar cycles or whatever, how the muff works and, and what's going on. I personally think it is the greatest tool for propagation to really look at and see how things are going. And, you know, you see a lot of different things on, uh, on sites or whatever, and it'll say, uh, you know, poor conditions, bad conditions or whatever. 
it's just like the weather, you know, the weatherman giving you the weather. He says it's going to rain and it doesn't rain. Sometimes those aren't accurate. The muff is pretty close. I mean, nothing is dead on. I mean, it's a, not an exact science, but it's pretty good to look at it and, and things to, to check out. I, I enjoy checking the muff all I can. I do like other things. And then we'll get into another video later. We'll talk about, you know, K index, A index, and what's actually going on with the ionosphere. I just wanted to go over the maximum usable frequency and what's going on under the ionosphere as we as HF ham radio operators are, are, are operating and what's going on with it. Anyway, that is kind of a really easy, simple, I hope, way to explain MUF and the maximum usable frequency and how important it is to you as an operator, as a ham radio operator in HF, which I enjoy, my favorite part of the hobby. But I, I hope that gives you a, a clear understanding. You know, a lot of guys, I, I even talk, I've talked to some guys that have been hams for years and they still don't understand this principle. They're like, ah, just fire it up and get on, man. It'll, it'll happen. Yeah, it, yeah, maybe, but... um it's nice to be uh, prepared and have a little tool. You know, having a ham radio license, it doesn't make you an expert by no means. Getting that ham radio license, if you're a tech and you're trying to get to general, it's not going to make you an expert. You know what it's going to give you? It's going to give you a license to learn, and that's what it's all about. You know, if, if going to deeper dive on some of this stuff, i got some good books in my library that I really like. Maybe you might want to take a look at. One of them is uh, the, the Fast Track to Ham Radio Propagation. This is by... Uh, uh, what we got here, Mike, I'm sorry, Michael Burnett, AF7KB. This is a really good book. It simplifies things about propagation. Uh, if you're like really just getting into propagation, I, I don't know him. I didn't, I bought this book, that, but I like that book a lot. Another one is by, um, uh, Steve, uh, Ker Steve Serwin, uh, WA5FRF, which is called Radio Propagation and Antennas. And if you see at the top, a non-mathematical, uh, treatment of the subject there. So this is a great book. I like that book. I just got, I'm digesting right now is, is this is new from the ARRL is uh, here to there radio propagation. This is a great book. I've just started reading this and really getting into it. But, um, like I said, getting back to it, man, getting your license doesn't make you an expert. I'm far from an expert, but I like to study and learn. And I, I hope you do too. I, and that's really what it's all about. So if you're into that, like I am. Hey, like and subscribe. We'll learn together. Until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO73, my friends.